We are the Samia Group. We are here to discuss the different kind of statistical variable in a research work. We will now begin in the nominal variable. <laughs> Dance. Let's start with the nominal variable. Nominal has something to do with naming. The important thing is there is no measure of distance between the values. You're either married or not married. The answer is determined by yes or no. So there is no question of how far apart in the quantitative sense those categories are. They are just names. Nominal scales, name, and that is all that they do. Some other examples are like sex, whether it's male or female, like race, whether it's black, Hispanic, oriental, white, and other, like political party, whether it's democratic, republican, and other. The next variable is the ordinal variable. What does ordinal imply? Ordinal implies order, and order means ranking. So the things being measured are in some order. You can have higher and lower amounts, less than and greater than are meaningful terms with ordinal variables where they were not with nominal variables. For example, you don't rank male and female as higher and lower, but you do rank stages of cancer, for example, as higher and lower. You can rank pains as higher or lower, so ordinal variables give you a more sophisticated level of measure, a finer tuned level of measurement, but you have to do with ranking. You know that something is higher than something else, or lower than something, or more painful than something, or less painful than something. Interval variables are the intervals between the numbers represent something real. This is not the case with ordinal variables. Interval variables have the property that differences in the numbers represent real differences in the variable. Another way to say this is that equal, equal differences in the numbers on the scale represent equal differences in the underlying variables being measured. For example, look at the difference between 36 degrees and 37 degrees compared to the difference between 40 degrees and 41 degrees on either Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature. Because the differences in the numbers are the same, when you have an interval variable, you know temperature intervals are the same. So with interval variables, you know now not only whether one value is higher than another, but that the distance between intervals on the scales are the same. Again, you have a higher level of information. Interval scales not only name and order, but also have the property that equal intervals in the numbers measured represent real equal differences in the variables. Examples of interval scales include Fahrenheit and Celsius temperatures. In general, many of the standardized tests of psychological and sociological and educational disciplines use interval scales. Interval measures all share the property that the value of zero is arbitrary. On the Celsius scale, for example, zero is the freezing point of water. On the Fahrenheit scale, zero is 32 degrees below the freezing point of water. Variables in the simplest term are a measurement defined by a number. So variable can be either discrete or continuous, depending on the nature of what is being measured. So it is important to know whether a variable or a set of variables is discrete or continuous because it will determine how the statistics derived from each can be analyzed. A discrete variable can only be a number in a finite and countable set of values. For instance, if you are measuring the number of times, you get heads when flipping a coin 10 times. You are dealing with a discrete variable since it is a finite and countable. In other words, discrete variable is a qualitative variable. Continuous variable are also known as quantitative variables. Continuous variable can be further categorized as either interval or ratio variables. 
While a discrete variable is finite and countable, a continuous variable is one with a range of possibilities. Examples of a continuous variable are time and weight. Unlike a discrete variable, a continuous variable can be infinite and uncountable. Another use of discrete variable is in surveys, in which the surveyor wants to quantify a quality, such as an, opi uh, an opinion of a product. The survey taker would be asked to rate a product with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, with 1 being the lowest quality rating and the 5 is the highest. The numbers in the ratings are discrete variables because they are finite and countable. Now, you might ask, why do we need to know about the types of variables or measures? We need to know in order to evaluate the appropriateness of the statistical techniques used, and consequently, whether the conclusions derived from them are valid. In other words, you can tell whether the results in a particular medical research study are credible unless you know what types of variables or measures have been used in obtaining the data. You and I be like sunny shed, honey bears, oh, and you and I be like Aladdin and Jasmine, let's make it happen like la la la. la. Yeah.